Hello, I'm Kevin F. Montague. Welcome to the Astro Boy 9 channel on YouTube. You know, science can be pretty handy, especially in the kitchen. I'm sure some of you out there are probably saying to yourself, what's this guy talking about? I never use science in my kitchen. I go fix myself a canned soup or I do some cooking or I do my dishes and I don't ever think about science. That's all been thought out for me. I get a TV dinner or I, something I want to put in the oven, I follow the instructions and uh, I take care of it from there. Well, I'm about to show you a trick using science to help you do something most of you probably struggle with in your uh, homes. Uh, it has to do with making orange juice. And one of the key things in science uh, the key forces in science have to do with pH, temperature, and pressure. When you know those three forces, they can come in pretty handy in the kitchen. Now, some of you probably take a can like this, this frozen orange juice, which you can see it's fresh out of the freezer, it's still got the ice on it, and um, you uh, probably pop the lid open and you take a fork or a spoon out while it's frozen and you struggle to get as much out as you can and put it in a container like this. Maybe you add warm water, maybe you don't, you just put cold water in and it takes a while for you to get the whole thing going. Well I'm going to show you some tricks that are going to help you uh, do it a lot faster using those three premises, pH, temperature, and pressure. To, and if you get practiced at this, you can make, you can turn this frozen orange juice into a whole quart of ice cold orange juice in about 60 seconds using just the things I'm going to show you here that I'm about to use to make all of this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my hot water. We're going to use temperature to help get this thing going. And what I'm going to do as the water heats up is I'm going to let it thaw the outer ice. And then I'm going to just let it sit under the water for a little bit and warm the container up. Now what's happening is it's uh, releasing the, um, the frozen OJ that's sticking to the inside walls of this cardboard container. It would take a long time to really thaw this out. And I'm going to take off the strap here that's holding the metal seal on. Now we're going to let temperature help us a little bit. As you can see that's pretty well frozen. It's solid. Okay, that's enough. Now we don't need the, the lid anymore. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole here using this um, bottle opener. Whoops, it's already starting to slide out. And that's going to release the pressure that's holding the frozen orange juice inside. And then I'm going to drop that in here into the blender. And you see it just pops right out. Sometimes I have to blow on the bottom <laughs> to get it to get started. But usually if you just warm it up enough and then you release the bottom pressure, it'll slide right out. Okay, now given that that orange juice is pretty damn cold, I'm going to go ahead and use hot water and put some of it in here. Now I know how much that uh, blender is going to be able to hold. So I'm not going to fill this up all the way. But I'm going to fill it up just enough so we can put enough in the blender. And that's nice and hot. I need a little bit more. Okay, and let's take it over here to the blender. And uh, I'm going to pour that in here. It'll start to melt the ice a little bit. I'm not going to fill it all the way because the second I turn the blades on, it's going to displace that water and start bouncing that ice around. But I'm going to use a very low setting. And I'm going to put the lid on. Always put the lid on and then hold it with your hand. Make sure everything's snug and tight. And then go ahead and just turn it on. And that's enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead, since I still have water in there, 
I'm going to go ahead. You know, I like, sometimes I like to let this whip for a while because I used to love orange Julius's. They don't, so I don't see those anymore around. But those were really delicious. And they usually was just whipped orange juice with a few other things thrown in. And I'm just going to pour it in here. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty well ready to go. And now, let's go back over to the sink. Okay, and this time I'm going to fill it, the rest of it with cold water. Make sure that's cold. Because it's a little bit warm. Sometimes you can just use just warm water. You don't have to use pure hot. Depends on what kind of day you're having. And uh, fill the rest of it up. And I'll just set that down here. We'll put this aside. And uh, I have these kitty latches on because I keep reading about from all the scientific literature how we make it an earthquake eventually from the San Andreas Fault and that's to help hold the dishes in because we've had some pretty good ones out here over the years. And as you can see if I pour this in we're all set and ready to go. Now if I didn't have to explain all of this to you I probably could have done that in 60 or 90 seconds walking through those steps. It's perfect. Absolutely delicious. And if you use these techniques, there's all kinds of things you can do in the kitchen that will help you to uh, make things faster. In fact, one of the things uh, I love to do uh, that I'm sure all the cleaning companies that make uh, cleansers and stuff would hate me to have to tell you is if you ever want to really clean your pots and pans, you know how you're cooking stuff? and it gets all sticky and whatever you cooked has just baked itself onto the pan. If you will use the same process of temperature and liquid to clean it up, you'll never have to use a cleanser to clean your pots and pans. Uh, if it took heat and liquid to make it stick, I can guarantee you it'll take heat and liquid to easily take it off. All you have to do is put water into the pan, turn the heat back on, let it sit, and then use a, a wooden spoon or something to scrape it off and all the uh, acidic meats and vegetables and stuff will lift right off of your pan if it's stainless steel that is and you won't have to use a cleanser uh, to have to strip it off cleansers strip the surface of the pan especially if they're teflon coated but if you just use the same process of temperature and heat to take it off it does a pretty good job just cleaning it all on its own so um we didn't talk about ph because it didn't apply this time pH has a lot of benefits. pH is something uh, that is used in your uh, w when you're washing clothes. Did you know that the particles that are on your clothes are acidic and that most detergents are alkaline? All that alkalinity, which usually is around pH 22, which is very high, when it bonds to your clothes, it takes off gently all those acidic particles that have electronically stuck to your clothes, separates them, suspends them in the water, and then is flushed out by the water and agitation without you having to do any of the work. So there's a perfect example of how pH helps you in the kitchen, uh, or if you have your laundry there, or if you have it in another part of your house, to help you get your clothes clean. So that's it. That's frozen OJ using uh, temperature and using pressure to help get something done I think a lot of us hate to do but do it quick fast efficiently and this is probably very handy for those of you who are at home whether you're uh, the husband or the wife and you've got a lot of kids and you've got any things to move fast in your kitchen so I hope that helps you I'm Kevin F Montague thank you for joining me again on the Astro Boy 9 channel on YouTube